I forgot to hit record, so here we go again. Today, we will talk about power, um, domination, and sort of the psychological components that I think are at play in both humans and non-humans. Um, this was inspired by a conversation I was having in a group where sort of humans are portray were portrayed as being sort of separate um, from other animals that we kind of let morality or something like that dictate how we go about building our societies and I sort of argued against this um, and I think that humans glorify themselves too much so uh or not even that it shouldn't be unglorified to see us as something different than that uh, we are like animals and animals are fine i guess so uh yeah before we get started i'm going to ping out everybody so i guess um the first things first i'm gonna stop you from seeing this real quick and uh let's see channel Wow, that's awkward. Um, oh, crap. Okay. So, uh... Streaming about power, psychology, animals, and so on. Okay. Say things in chat if you want me to respond. Um, okay, next. Discord. So, uh, almost done setting up. Next, gonna send it out to Discord. Okay, uh, let's. There we go. How scary sending it out to 635 plus people. Holy shit, I'm gonna die. Too late. Okay, so um, I'm gonna do random stuff. Like, uh, let's just look up the word power and put it to images. What does it show? Okay. Hello. Okay, so I kind of did an intro. I'll kind of quickly recap. I was having a discussion earlier about whether or not humans um, are like animals. And uh, my position is that they are like animals, and I know that it's commonly thought that they aren't. Um, so what does that mean? Um, so in this particular discussion, it was the idea that humans are driven by something beyond raw power or violence and stuff like that, and that something like a chimp is driven more by just violence, and it's kind of like this instinctual uh, sort of thing. And I think that actually we are all like that. We are all responding to power in a similar way. Um, so I guess first, let's think of like a chimp society. I think a chimp society There'll be sort of like a leader, maybe, that, um, and some of this might be wrong, uh, just putting that out there. This is just sort of how I see it, and I'm not like the most informed person ever when it comes to like chimp behavior, but I am interested in animal psychology and have looked up a lot of stuff about it. Um, but I don't necessarily know like the intricacies of like a chimp hierarchy or like something beyond just like a leader and stuff like that. Um, I know that they go to war, and so the way I think it is, is that, um, so there's kind of this idea that like a chimp, the leader chimp will be one that is more strong or intimidating. And this might be true of like other animals. We could even just say that we could talk about it more hypothetically or something without uh but let's just let's just focus on the chimp thing okay so 
um, chimps might uh, demonstrate power through something like violence. And the thing is, I think that humans are doing this too, it's just not as apparent. Like, I've seen this argument that humans are more empathetic and they're doing it differently. But then I kind of look at things like cops, which are basically violence enforcement. And they might act polite, they might not scream or immediately threaten you, but they're carrying a gun and everybody is basically universally aware of this. And I think that that functions as a kind of implicit threat. It's kind of like, just so you know, I can kill you at any moment, so don't try to pull anything, because then you'll die. And I think that that actually... I think it's inescapably the driving force of our interaction with cops, is that um, that they can just enact violence on us at any moment. And we are aware of that. And not only that, but when you interact with the average citizen, they can basically have the violence enforcement arrive within like two minutes or something, or five minutes or ten minutes. They can just call 911 and uh, violence enforcement will show up and do uh, your bidding. Or not necessarily your bidding, but uh, as long so as long as your bidding is in alignment with what violent and violence enforcement wants, uh, which is in alignment with a whole structure of systems uh, like law. And um, I don't know. I think that's not really different from chimps. Like I think we're still being driven by our instincts of fear. Like the the thing that the chimps would be doing in this situation with their toughness or threats. Like, like I think when a chimp is demonstrating its physical power and strength, that this is like their way of showing that they have a gun. Uh, but the thing is with a gun, it's so extremely powerful that you really don't have to do anything. You don't have to like demonstrate. The, you don't have to like shoot someone and be like, you see what it does? Like, we're constantly watching films and all of this stuff showing that uh, that we can enact that kind of violence. And uh, But the chimp kind of has to show, like, that that's even a thing. Like, like, if they're just soft, the first thing that that would signal is that they're not willing to take the risk of fighting or something like that which then shows the other chimps that well you can just do it you can get away with anything it's like a cop that's like they have a gun but they're like nah you know i'm never going to use this gun they just give it to me because it's part of my job you know so like like if you pull out a knife on me i'm not gonna shoot you or anything then the person's obviously going to be more likely to pull out the knife and then um so I think that's still there. And I also think that there's dynamics among chimps where the chimps... So, like, chimps can probably band together and annihilate uh, a shitty leader. And uh, if a leader's, like, shitty and, like, not helping the rest of the chimps, they're not going to follow that leader. Um... So the chimp would have like an obligation to appease the desires of other chimps. And I don't know how far that really goes among chimp societies, but in human societies it's obviously going to an extreme degree. Like, this is kind of what politics is all about. It's about giving people there the desires, which I think will uh, ultimately boil down to things like sex, food, um... And maybe some more seemingly abstract things that actually might still have to do with base desires. So, like, if we started enforcing... If we said people are not allowed to bodybuild, it's not like people want to bodybuild because this is, like, some innate pleasure. It's, like, because it helps us get sex or something. So, like, if we were to, if we were to outlaw bodybuilding, people would freak out because that's limiting 
something about their ability to acquire sex or live their life in that kind of way. And uh, maybe it would be, I mean, it gets like tricky there, right? Because like, if everybody's not allowed to do that, then the competition sexually wouldn't really be, um, it wouldn't involve that. But, but I think people would still freak out. And uh, I actually don't know. It's kind of hard to think through there, but but people people not being allowed to do things uh, because of the power that others have is kind of like the main thing that I think politics becomes about. And then there's obviously like management of different opposing groups which live amongst each other, and uh, each of those groups trying to establish power over each other. And then, I don't know, larger groups will probably have more power over politicians. Um, more powerful groups, just regardless if they have um, higher numbers, they will be more, uh, have more influence over politicians. Like, so if you have a lot of money, money is, money is like a weird way of controlling people. Um, you can buy out violence or sex or other things like that. Um, there is a viewer saying something. Next time we debate, we need to do VMS because you have so much more to say than what was conveyed over messages. Maybe you could clarify what you mean. I actually don't know. Who are you, Little Fried Egg? But maybe don't dox yourself. I don't know. And also, what is VMS? Video messaging? Um, and uh, I'm get, I think I know who you are. Voice messages. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, hello, Marina. Welcome. Yeah, this is a little bit unfair because you are trapped as a um, in a text prison. Um, hmm. Yeah. Would you want to join me? You can, maybe. We can talk about it on stream. That's a little bit, that could be intimidating. I don't know how you'd feel about it. It's even intimidating for me because I don't know. I don't know where it goes. <laughs> but um, if you'd like to, uh, we could go on Discord. I can drop the link of Discord into the chat or something. And uh, then uh, you can either be on voice only or video if you'd like. Um, as long as you agree to not be an asshole. <laughs> um, see, that's a weird power thing, too, is people like, like, say me, I'm a fr I'm probably a little bit afraid if someone's like bullying me or something. And I think people bully each other in debates in public so that like, um, it's almost like, like maybe I have like childhood trauma or something like that where I freak out about being bullied or maybe I'm just naturally sensitive to being bullied and then like people will go up and like in a debate they'll start bullying and then like and then like that's like activating my fear that I can't easily control to like take advantage of the fact of that it's like rather than um I think people will do that rather than communicating more explicitly or about the actual topic it's like because sometimes there's like a lot at stake, like it doesn't really matter so much whether we win or it's not like, it's not like people are trying to fight over what's true sometimes. Sometimes it's like about reputation or something else, uh, which you can amplify your reputation just by making the other person look bad or whatever. Um, so power kind of is a part of that too. Okay, more message. No, it's okay. I have stuff to do right now. Next time, we have to find an easier way to communicate because we have you have a lot of interesting stuff. Yes, I'm interested. Um, kind of always looking to chat about this stuff. Um, maybe I'm addicted to it. It's like my way of trying to grow my beliefs. I think I get like really. I think I'm really impatient about learning in a traditional way sometimes so i almost like it's really stimulating if i get other people to um engage me on like debating or something 
And uh, what I do learn in classical ways too, I mean, I read a lot of literature, but like a lot of times I don't because it's, I think, painfully boring. So I try to like engage in discussions and stuff like that. Um, but also, it, let's say I was right about anything, then maybe other people will adopt that belief and I'll colonize the psychological mimetic world or something. World domination, that's my real uh, motivation. No, I'm just kidding. But um, back to the power topic and all this stuff with animals and humans. Another weird thing that kind of came up, and I don't think it was even in relation to... Um, well, actually, first, before I say that, I think, th I think the main things that humans care about is stuff like... I think it's almost... It's basically desires. That's the core root of everything. And uh, desires manifest as usually resources. Depending on how abstract you want to make that, you could say, like access to sex as a resource, but that gets like weird and objectifying. Um, but then it would mostly be like uh, people want the ability to enact violence, uh, which they won't say, <laughs> but um, which I kind of gave examples of that, like uh, police. So like there's a whole thing of like people who are black in America basically have less access to utilize violence enforcement and it's actually turned against them a lot and they hate this and i think that's a clear case where it's like people obviously want that kind of power and a lot of it's like protection and then there's like the right to own firearms which is also all of it usually boils down to protection and so like the ability to control violence is stemming from like fear so like chimps, if they usually use violence in their dynamics, I think it's usually exploiting fear. Like the chimps are aware that that physical violence hurts, and that's scary, and I don't want to be hurt. So if someone, if I think someone can hurt me or kill me, I will do what they say. Uh, kind of in the discussion from earlier, I brought up this idea about a weird way in which someone might quickly become a leader is if like say they break into your home with a gun um you wouldn't like this but they would actually become your leader and you would probably submit to them unless you have a means to defend yourself against that violence you'd probably listen to what they say and obey them and i think that's still a form of leadership and it's actually more similar to the kind that chimps will enforce but i also think that if chimps only enforce violence and they aren't being fair at all i think the chimps can just group up and be like fuck this guy we don't want this guy he's not he's not useful to us um and yeah then um then there's like sex which is a weird means of power but obviously people do things like use other people's desire for sex to control them um and all these different forms of power i think are kind of like these are where a lot of laws are actually focused is like mitigating abusive power structures um and then besides sex there is kind of resource management which i think i brought up and kind of explained a little bit um resource management can kind of uh come in uh sorry i heard a sound and now i'm all like distracted um i don't know so resource management gets kind of interesting like that's like i think a lot of populism comes down to this like like so like people say jobs maybe that's like a type of resource money um so money is like, it's actually what ties people down to survival um, or other things like sex and status, which leads to sex or leads to the ability to control other people and get what you want. Um, money, 
so if, like i don't know if we look at like uh politics and stuff there's a lot of things like populist strategies where they'll say uh we can get you more jobs but um we have to like purge like some of the population or something crazy right or we have to like stop immigration or whatever else um it's kind of like telling people that if you vote for me you'll survive like you're afraid that you're going to lose your job or you did lose your job and if you want to survive you better vote for me and you better submit your power to me vote for me and give me the ability to dominate a lot of people and i will stop the mean people from hurting you i'll stop the evil people from uh imposing death on you or taking away your resources and threatening you um and this kind of goes into a weird thing i was thinking someone was they were talking about politics yesterday and uh there was this talk about like democracy and ways of democracy versus kind of like a more authoritarian structure where um the thing with like an authoritarian government at least from my weak understanding is that with an authoritarian structure it's like if the authoritarian government does something wrong the people will turn against the government because they are responsible they're the ones taking the responsibility that's kind of their role as an authoritarian government they're the ones like saying we're making the decisions so like if something goes wrong it's like fuck the government that's what they did to us and um this kind of got brought up in the context of like rebellions in china and stuff and then in america though it's kind of weird because we have like this whole democracy thing and instead of it being like the power is with the government it's kind of like flipped to where it's like the power is in the hands of the people you all get to choose what you want with your vote but of course like it's much more complicated than that but the fact that it's like that at all means that we can kind of be like well who did this to us it was the republicans they did this to us they voted for trump fuck them fuck half the population let's rebel against them and uh which i think can kind of break into like that's why maybe instead of like rebelling against the government now we might have a civil war which is kind of weird and interesting um another weird thing about power structures i was thinking is religion um a lot of religion or no well christianity let's say is kind of offering um i feel like offering heaven the idea of heaven is like it's like you're offering infinity to people you're telling people follow what i say and you will be granted infinite resources for eternity like it's like immortality everything you want as long as you follow my rules and um i don't know it's weird and so like this kind of ties back into the original thing with um i don't know there's like um power outages look at that that's funny because that's a different is it a different kind of power i don't know um not really <laughs> people with more electricity obviously have more power but um so like with religion in mind this kind of ties back into the morality thing um it was kind of claimed that humans the idea was kind of like that humans compared to other animals they're more conceptual more uh having like these beliefs about morality that are driving their behaviors and i don't think that that's really different i think that morality really is just kind of it's about managing our feelings which again come back down to fears sex and stuff like that um so like exploiting people's fears unfairly is kind of like a moral dilemma that's one of the probably the one of the biggest ones like should i um 
like, should I get married to someone and start beating the shit out of them as a way to make them scared and uh, do what I say because they're too scared not to. That's like, um, that is obviously like an ethical problem or a moral problem, or at least people would feel that way. And um, a lot of moral stuff is centered around like death. Like, is it okay to kill people? Um, which isn't just about killing people. It's like, it's not just, is it okay to kill people? It's also, is it okay to make th people believe that you're willing or going to kill people? So like, so like right now, we're not really allowed to murder people. And that means that threatening to murder people is kind of a weak uh, utility because it's so unlikely because it's if you murder someone you'll basically be tortured until death usually in prison your whole life will be taken from you and it'll be like you're forced to live through this like hellish existence it might even be worse than death in some cases um so it's like we're kind of using massive threats to prevent people from doing murder but if murder weren't illegal, uh, you could threaten to murder people without actually meaning to do that, and it would have power to control people. Like, if you don't do what I say, I'm going to murder you. That has a lot more weight if you're allowed to murder people. So it's kind of like, it's kind of a, a weird thing. Um, also, the thing about, like, like, say, like an abusive relationship... That's like a case where you can really see that we are still driven by these kind of urges to use violence to control people. I think it's because intimate relationships, they can kind of exit the territory of like a policed society. Like you can create a situation in which the police won't get involved and thus you're protected against the police by hiding in the shadows basically like um so like a common situation is probably that if you go to the police um as an adult i don't know how much they can do if you're being physically assaulted um like i imagine you wouldn't go to jail for life obviously if someone's just like punching you but not like severely harming you um so then it gets like kind of weird like you can you can kind of like escalate violence to a point where people are like scared of continued escalation and they don't know if they'll eventually die you can make them think that they're gonna die um, without actually intending to do that and um if you don't actually do something where they're likely to die then with the cops, uh, you'll be free to return to the relationship. And then the person might be more scared because they've called the violence officers against you and they've pitched you in a torture room, maybe like for a couple days, like a jail overnight or jail for weeks or whatever it is. And then, uh, so they've, in a weird way, they've gotten a form of revenge on you. They've punished you with the violence officers and with imprisonment temporarily so now if you've done that then you'll be scared that they're going to retaliate with their own form of punishment and it's kind of like this cycle of like punishment and power and all of this um but it's like a weird thing because the the violent person can get away with making you think that you're gonna die without actually going to jail permanently to protect you from that outcome like like the mere just threat of and you could just say no i'm not threatening to kill you and you can just keep insisting that you will you will ne you were never doing that and then you will just you'll be protected the law won't be able to stop you from making people subtly afraid that you're going to kill them so i think that's like the why such situations occur is because they actually can um and being in an intimate dependent 
situation means that it just means that it's possible like the way society is enables violence situations like that to occur which i think in a chimp society it's not so much different i don't think chimps are really that different i think that their capacity to communicate and form like societies like we do is obviously limited but and i hate the word obviously i ranted about this the other day so i'm sorry for doing that again sorry for saying obviously um, but so chimps i don't think they have a, the capacity to build similar societies but they are still i think they're still driven by most of the same desires and i think they employ the same strategies i think they are kind of a like they don't have guns so that dynamic explained with guns is different but it's not like humans don't engage in threats of murder and violence because i explained how they do in abusive relationships and i think they do in other circumstances too i think there, there there's like a whole complicated set of circumstances that would enable such a situation like there's a reason that bosses of companies major like ultra huge companies like apple don't enforce violence on their employees like it's obvious that that's i'm saying it again but but I, you can see how that just wouldn't work like it would be so insanely quickly shut down and it would fail so hard that people don't even try it even if they wanted to but they also don't want to because they don't want failure that's the difference and in the situation where it's actually a viable solution it becomes way more appealing and i think with chimps it's the most viable solution possible i think everything that the chimps are doing it's because it's the most viable solution and i think that they're actually being reasonable i think they're being kind of as logical as logical as they could be i don't think it's purely like um I don't know. I think it's as logical as probably the person in the abusive situation is. I think it's as logical as calling the cops on an abuser is. I think it's as logical as not enacting violence as the leader of a major company is. I think all of these things are different scenarios and extremely nuanced circumstances in which these behaviors are reasonable. And rather than thinking of animals as being completely unreasonable and like just arbitrary unconscious machines that just happen to do all these behaviors, I think it's more like their circumstances have created situations in which their decisions are the most reasonable that they can come up with. And I think the differences between humans and something like a chimp isn't even pure intelligence. I don't think what we're doing is really about like the ability, like particularly the ability to calculate and um, like I, I think what's more going on with humans is that, like, okay, I, I like to compare it to ants. Ants have more complex massive societies than chimps but it's not because ants are much smarter than chimps that doesn't really make sense to me if to think of them like that i think um let's uh ants colony wow look at that society right there imagine if chimps were all doing this imagine if chimps were like gathering these resources and building tunnels underground and like um even like farming other animals and uh, building bridges with their bodies and carrying like like farming molds like agriculture like <laughs> chimps don't do that stuff and i don't think it's because chimps are stupid and ants are smart i think ants are actually probably closer to being robotic uh, than chimps and i actually i don't even think that ants are like necessarily unconscious maybe pretty agnostic about that which i think some people will find insane but um i think that ants 
could have like a minimal awareness that's on the level of complexity of something like like say like the controls of a smash brothers game i feel like that's fairly simplistic like there's like a d-pad or something right to move but then like a human it's like rather than a d-pad i have this 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 all these different configurations of even just my hand of my mouth of my nose every part of my body like so a lot of my brain being big will be to do like insanely complex things and then to like route that to my ability to communicate and make my mouth move in such a way that it creates sounds that will go to your brain and basically almost like in a sense to tele telepathically communicate what I'm thinking or wanting you to think uh, so that you'll behave in the ways that I want you to and just like all this crazy shit like me being able to predict you and map out your behaviors and thoughts in such a way that I can like make sounds that I think you will understand and give you the things that I believe like that's like ridiculous and I think that's something that not even chimps are doing and I don't think that's because we're like so intensely intelligent that we've just happened to realize that wow maybe maybe I can communicate with this person like that I think it's like an evolved function which I think ants have similarly evolved functions where they communicate in ways that allow for such a society to form that chimps don't. I think chimps lack the certain mechanisms of societal formation that ants actually have, and it's not because ants are t intelligent. So I hope that kind of makes sense. Is like chimps, I think humans are like the ants of chimps. I think we are as intelligent and calculating as a chimp, except we have the capacity to interface with each other that is like on the level of ants, which means that we can build societies, have agriculture, and do things like that. I just think the mechanism that we do it is not necessarily like ants. I think that like, like I think our cultural evolution is pretty different than, uh, I think ants are like probably physically evolving instead of having a culture. I think humans have a culture in which so that like we can basically like transform our behaviors and evolve them within our own lifetimes whereas I think ants kind of live and die and uh they pass on behaviors through like subtle changes like evolution basically and I think the same evolutionary dynamics are at play um with humans i just think we don't have to die for it we don't have to yeah we don't have to die like parts of our ideas die but i think it's still not i don't think that we're just i like like if you took a human an intelligent human and put them in a box and didn't raise them within like education or anything you just put them in a box they didn't learn language they didn't learn any of the stuff they didn't absorb any culture at all. I don't think that taking like 50 of those people and pitting them together after they're an adult would create any kind of society. I think they would just be like, maybe even worse off than chimps. Like they might even be worse off. So, um, but I do think that the way that culture is, is we, we keep passing down ways of life and rules of behavior that don't have to evolve through genetics and um, this kind of gives us the ability to um, evolve much faster so then we can get much more ahead of ants ants might eventually reach the kinds of things that we do but they will be that will take probably forever maybe there'll be some kind of limitation where culture is somehow necessary I'm not sure but that seems a little bit dubious because I would think that I feel like people would have argued that farming animals and having agriculture probably relied such kind of cultural mechanisms, but ants contradict that. Um, so yeah, I think 
the kind of thing that I usually view as intelligent is more like the capacity to figure things out for oneself more than to follow religious instructions of behavior, which is what I think culture really is. Like, um, a lot of it's just like social norms about how to integrate into the system of careers, jobs, and how to behave within norms and follow the police and whatever else. Um, but I do think that humans are very intelligent. Um, but, uh, so there's like some videos you might have seen where chimps, they're put on a task to, uh, they basically have a screen, a screen pits numbers on it in a random order, and then it, uh, right when you touch one, it, uh, it conceals the rest of the numbers and you have to press them in order. And, uh, the chimps do it incredibly fast. Um, chimp number test. I'll show you what I mean. Um, probably have seen it, but, uh, we'll just, uh, watch it anyway. Let me see if it's showing it. Yeah. So look at this. See how fast this is? So basically they're having like a photographic type of, what's well I don't know if I would say it, uh, like a photographic short-term memory or something like that. Like they just see it, instantly press the button and they have it memorized, right? See that? And uh, you probably watch this and it's like intimidating. I think it's intimidating. But uh, they did another study where they trained humans to do this. And from my understanding, Humans were able to compete with chimps, but there were still some stipulations. Um, and uh, so if you think about that, um, yeah, hello Toucan, Toucan, welcome. Yeah, that's crazy, right? It's crazy as hell. It's like, what the fuck? That's scary a little bit. <laughs> um, so like, I think the chimp has the capacity to be as kind of like, um, like if the cultural aspects, like especially communication and focusing on understanding what other people are thinking, like if that was a part of their brain, um, and I don't think that emerges from pure just like, I don't think it's like you become increasingly calculating until one day you realize the potential for like, trying to read people's minds or something. I think it's more like we have a module, which maybe is like part of like the frontal lobe or something, where it's like dedicated to focusing visually and sensory stuff on what other people are doing. I think that like, like there's even like evidence about like babies, I think they start forming sounds that are like language-like, even, uh, without being taught language yet or something like that, or they start like mumbling and doing things. But that's that's like a whole I mean that's that gets really complicated, I guess. Because it's not like they're isolated from language, so I don't know. But um but I do think there are like language dedicated parts of our brain that um that are probably like evolved for detecting nuances and our voice and phonetics, and also for us to have the capacity to mimic other people making those sounds and uh, to even be able to make the sounds in the first place. Like, um, I don't even know if chimps could. Like, because obviously chimps can understand things that people say, like we've taught them sign language and stuff, and we can like teach them, like even dogs will respond to what humans say. But these species cannot vocalize like us. And uh, actually, oh my god, let's look up uh, dog vocalizing like human. Let's see, I, I think there's actually videos um, that are scary. Uh, that looks weird. Holy shit. That's not what we're looking at. Um, usually it's like a husky or something that makes a... Uh... Oh, this is weird. Maybe that's it? What if it's fake? I took you out when she wants something. It's like she's trying to talk without any words coming out. I don't know if this is good, though. So. Time they ran away, um, the owners didn't want to 
This is like the Dodo. I don't know if you guys watch the Dodo, but um, I don't know. I feel like Huskies, Huskies seem like they're trying to talk. Um, no, what, what? Not available, why? I love you. Mishka, I love you. Mishka, I love you. <laughs> I love you. Mishka, I love you. <laughs> I love you. I love you. And then there's like dog uses soundboard to talk. Stella. Stella is the f the famous one. I've also seen this one. Um, let's look up Stella. Um, Stella uses like this sta soundboard. Um, Oh no, I don't want to listen to that conservative lady. Oh god. Stella speaks when she has something to say. How different is what you're I don't want to hear this interview. Um, let's see, what is this? Eat. Hmm. There's another one that's freakier where the dog used a soundboard to uh, point out that there was a bird outside and then the soundboard it used the word chicken or something. <laughs> I don't know but I start getting suspicious like how much can you actually f like, how much is actually possible for a dog to understand and not because of its not even because of its like brain limitations but it's like there's certain things like i don't even know how you would like like so does the dog that eats chicken do they understand that what they're eating is even a bird like would a child a human even understand that or would they just think like that chickens grew out of like the chicken they're eating is just grown out of a tree like i feel like you'd have to really show that that is the case so some of it i get like um weird about like, and there's been stuff like with, with like humans that can't communicate where stuff like this happened and it was like a huge thing in psychology where uh, humans fucked up thinking that they're helping uh, humans communicate. But there is some stuff, like it's possible that they are saying some stuff, but the other things they're trying to say don't have meaning. I think that's probably the most likely scenario because I've seen other videos where like they might, like they might, they might hit the button for like one of their owner's name, and then they point to that owner, then they, uh, uh, see that one's not even like, this is like barely even in words. It's like symbolic hieroglyphics or something. I've seen this dog, Buddy, though. This one was the most impressive, but also... Um, maybe the most sketchy. Like, I sometimes even wonder if... Uh, let me see if this... What the heck, Yahoo? Ugh. Oh god. I'm gonna check chat real quick. Yeah, okay. Um well enough of that actually. You kinda get the point. I, I I didn't really show you the most impressive ones to be honest. But this one says some interesting stuff and then also seems to like communicate non verbally. So like Stella the thing with that's not Stella, but Stella Seems like she presses the buttons and always will kind of like look at the owner and wait for a response. Um, whereas Buddy seems to do other things too, like that makes it more clear, clearly seeming like they know what they're saying. Like the, if the, if it asks for food, it might go over to the bowl 
or it might cry, like it might be like, right, um, demanding what it wants, or like there's, there's like weird drama stuff that I've seen where it's like one of the dogs will be on the couch and this dog is like mad at other dog and it's like, seems like they're wanting them to get off the couch. Um... And stuff like that or other things but yeah um so anyway so the whole distraction of that was um that whole tangent was about chimps understanding communication which i think they do is this looping okay no it's gonna go forever let's just uh make it more rat colony The mammal ants. Freaky, right? They kind of have a similar societal structure as ants, but they're mammals. It's really interesting. Um, so yeah. Um, back to the topic. So, so it's obvious like chimps can communicate and understand, but I think that they don't, their brain is not hyper-focused on communication in the same way. It's like, so I think they're basically intelligent enough to even understand our language by simply just noticing patterns and figuring out the meaning behind those patterns, like pattern recognition, which I think is more like a natural, like a more like a, like more actually what I think intelligence itself is, separate from pure like evolved communication capacity which i think uh other hypersocial but less intelligent species also do and i think it's even better than raw intelligence like obviously ants get further than chimps and i think it's debatable that they're more successful as a species on the planet uh maybe even like second to humans or something um <coughs> But, um, yeah, um, so other animals seem to be able to comprehend our language, but they can't really engage with it that much. Um, I think they probably would struggle to figure out ways to communicate, whereas for us, maybe it's like halfway automatic, but it's also cultural. Like, we're literally trained to behave in the ways of communication. Like different cultures have different communication patterns. And um, so I think we have modules for like doing that. Um, I think maybe chimps lack certain ways of like predicting and controlling people in social ways, but also they also, with a human, they also lack a lot of power unless they were going to try to kill them or something maybe i guess i don't know but so this is i, I feel like we're towards the end here i'm uh i'm less sure of where to go but yeah i guess the point there was that i think i think i'm not even this is something i've written about and argued a lot in the past about is that i'm not actually i'm pretty agnostic about whether humans are even the most intelligent species and actually, before we go, that's I should clarify that. Um, I think that our cultural intelligence is so much more beyond the utility of actual intelligence that, like, I even think that it's possible that we would um, start selecting against, like, a more raw intelligence because, um, like... The ability to think for oneself and solve problems for oneself, um, that becomes so much less important when everyone around you can solve your problems. So like if you think about it, right now in the place we are in society, someone with like Down syndrome has a much better chance of breeding and surviving than ever before. And, uh, and it's not because they're so intelligent that they've built a society or something. Like, none of us really built this thing. I think this society is closer to, like, how an ant society manifests. Like, it just kind of 
we're being pulled along. I think even a lot of us are opposing it right now. I think we're like, we're like, holy shit, we've created like this infinite torture device of slavery and uh, toxic work environments. And um, it's like slowly stealing away all of our capacity to be individuals. And now I think we're kind of breaking down. I don't know if that's why, though. I think it's more like a lot of things. But um, but I think stuff like that does break down, where people are going to start being like, I'm not contributing to this. Like, fuck this system. I hate it. And uh, the more shitty it is to more people, the more they're going to rebel against it. But yet, for their own survival, in a lot of cases, they have to contribute to it in a weird way. Like, our need to survival forces us into building that society like we have to build the machine because it's like a codependent relationship where uh we're just pulled along huh and uh like like people will say like show me when this is the thing that people also always used to say to me is like show me when a chimp builds like a rocket or something and i'm like You've never done that. You've never built a rocket. The person that built rockets didn't do it alone, and they're doing it with knowledge that stems back probably, like, beyond 2,000 years ago. Like, they've literally been building it with, like, maybe, I don't even know, like, at least thousands of people, maybe even much more. And then you're telling me to, like, compare this with a chimp that struggles to collaborate with other chimps. And, uh... I think that's ridiculous. Like, you can take a human and push them in a situation where they lose the capacity to collaborate, and they'll fail. And then you might say that that capacity to collaborate is intelligence, and I'm like, no, because the Down syndrome person is clearly lacking what we would call intelligence, and they clearly have the capacity for collaborating and getting loads of people to collaborate with them. They can get people to take care of them. Like... Like, obviously, they have that kind of social power a lot of times. They might be less capable of acquiring, like, financial power through the means of proving that they are uh, worthy via intelligence or something, but they're still considered worthy because, uh, like, people, people kind of, like, see them as not being able to take care of themselves, and even something like that gives them social power. Even if that's maybe kind of a dark situation. Um, yeah. So social power isn't really about... It's like just getting people to agree with you. Or not even agree with you, but like to be willing to empathetically help you. And it's like humans probably are heavily inclined to do that because of what we evolved to do and not because we think it's so intelligent of a solution that we must all do it or something like it's there's, there's going to be people where it's like not the intelligent choice like even in my life there's a lot of situations that i get myself into where i'm almost willing to sacrifice my life almost be like 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 basically sacrifice my life to help caretake a family member that's uh in a terrible situation like to such a degree that i'll basically like annihilate my future and make myself potentially go homeless in the future because of that and i think that's a stupid choice and yet like it's clearly not the smartest survival choice or something it's because i evolved to feel extremely anxious and compelled to help people and that helping people happen to be something that evolved as a successful strategy at building like super massive societies in which everyone is compelled to collaborate with each other on the basis of like feelings like this but then there's also the more detached you are like say it's not my family member i don't care as much and then like people might exploit each other more uh through traditional power dynamics like threats of taking away your resources like a boss your boss is like do what i say 
or I'll fuck over your family and your children and all of that stuff. So you better do what I say. It's not as much like, damn, I really care about your kids. Like they do probably on some level have empathy for your kids, but obviously like, like there's a whole meme about how bosses are like psychopaths or that psychopaths will become bosses. Um, but I think there's another thing going on where having power over people in situations where it just simply doesn't elicit our empathy is like, it's going to look psychopathic. And the people who are at the very top are going to be those who are most in those situations. Like they have the most relationships in which they are not in an empathetic bond with people. So that means there'll be more people who look at that person like, wow, this person doesn't have empathy for me. But that person might still have empathy for their family or close friends at a similar rate that anyone else would. It's just that they're in a sp specific kind of circumstance that elicits the kind of relationship in which seems psychopathic, in which a normal person might also seem psychopathic. There's stuff like the Milgram experiment or like... I don't know, we don't have to get even into the details of that, but, or even like maybe a Stanford prison experiment, but that might have like, that's, that's like, there's probably like so many different angles to approach that where that's not the case. But even like, say, Nazism, it's like, I don't think that everyone that's enabling the system of Nazism is psychopathic or that, I don't know, I think it's, I think it's more complicated, like, political oppositions even are kind of psychopathic toward each other. I don't think it means that they are incapable of experiencing empathy with people. I think it's that our empathy for people has to do with like closeness and bonding more than it has to do with arbitrarily valuing people. But I do think there is some in, some feeling of empathy towards almost everyone. Like, I mean, I feel empathy towards animals and animals that I've never met, that I have never seen, and I will never even experience them suffering. Like, factory farming is something I oppose and feel disturbed by just because I imagine about the details of it. I think of all the nuanced details of it. And, uh... So, yeah. But at the same time, I can sort of shut down my empathy for even people in given cer different circumstances, like, wherein it's like... I don't know, but I could also empathize with it. It goes kind of both ways. And I think this, the job place situation of being at the top of a corporation probably strongly incentivizes being more like a psychopath. That would probably, it probably like, it's like, it's like a pipeline pushing people to become psychopaths in a way, but it's only circumstantial to the specific scenarios in which they find themselves. I've probably said that so many times now. <laughs> um, I'm sorry if that was like a loop, but I guess we're... Let's just uh, kind of end it, I guess. So thank you guys, whoever's out there, um, for watching. Um, I hope you found this interesting. If you want to... If this gave you ideas, chat with me about it. Oh, there is some chat. Hey, you ever think about humans as a... Hold, hold on, my dog is coming... Oh my gosh. Oh, hey. Uh, I'll show you my dog. Look at it. Um, there he goes. Um, but, uh, let me close the door real quick. Cause... Okay. Um, yeah. Um, oh, it's a boy. His name is Levi. Oh, wait. Let me get the mic back. Okay. So, uh, yeah, his name's Levi. Um, I post him in, uh, maybe not the new chat, I haven't posted him yet, but in the pr prior chats, he was like an icon. <laughs> um, he was a celebrity in a way, it's funny. Um, no one's ever seen him on camera, so you're the first, and, uh, congratulations. <laughs> um, but, uh... Oh, here he comes again. Maybe I'm gonna lock him in here because I, I feel like I'm. There's someone else here, and I talking about a weird topic, so I don't want to uh, just open the talk about. Him. Now you're trapped in here, Levi. 
Um, look at this. Where is he? Now he's going to one out, but he has to wait because... Yeah. Leroy, come here. Um, okay, so... Uh, yeah, superorganisms, yes. I think, I think people are partly a superorganism. And I think even ants are kind of like a individual and having a superorganism function at the same time. And the superorganism, like like everything I was saying about society, the way that we are almost like we have no choice. Like it's like it, this is the superorganism is threatening to kill us if we don't comply to what it wants. Oh my gosh! Now my dog wants out. <laughs> I'm going to. He does. He does this even with. I don't know. Going outside, he's like. Uh, he he continuously asks us to open the backyard door and. He kind of wants us to keep it always open, but then he like manipulates us into uh, doing that. And I think he wants to do that, me to do that with my room right now. It sucks. <laughs> okay. 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 Um. Oh, weird. Okay. Sorry if that was loud, the, I just like slammed the mic a little bit. Um, so yeah, so I think there's like a superorganism function alongside a, um, alongside individual functioning. And I think the superorganism, I think like culture is like that. I don't know if it's conscious though. That's something that scares me because I don't even know what makes something become sentient. And I don't think it's having a biological body. <laughs> I think that, or even if you talk about it having a biological body, the way that humans communicate with each other, it's like, like neurons are communicating with each other in some chemical messaging system. Um, maybe it's like an ant colony, but more just different. Um, and, uh, Humans are communicating through things like money, behaviors, speaking, um, driving, literally everything. And I don't know if the accumulation of all of that signaling would create a sentience. It's kind of spooky. I don't think, I'm not sure that I even think the sentience, I don't think it would be necessary actually for the superorganism to have desires and impose them onto us i think money is like the dopamine of the hive mind i've kind of like said that i like that line a lot it's one of my favorite lines <laughs> um because it's like weird like it, it not only does it interface with our dopamine systems like like our craving for money is because of like our dopamine and this is just a way to like externalize our desires in a way that multiple brains can calculate the meaning of desires in such a way that's supposed to be fair. Like, like my desire to like have sex or have a car or whatever else it, uh, whatever else it is, is like, it's like how much I desire it is kind of probably calculated by dopamine within our own mind and then we like externalize that as some kind of monetary value that like like within my own mind it's like i'll be comparing the value of like say a boat and i don't know a hot dog or something right and um the relative difference of how much i value each of those things kind of results in a price tag on each of those things and then we try to formalize some sort of uh, economic or like uh, some sort of a money-based value system that mirrors the relative values within our own mind. But it doesn't, it obviously doesn't, it's obviously not universal. Like, I don't actually care about a boat that much. Like, I would probably like to have one, but like the amount I value it is probably not at the price tag that it. It, that it costs, meaning that I won't buy one. 
Like that's how it basically works. Like if if the actual price in the real world doesn't map on to how much I value it, I'm like, fuck no, I don't care, I don't want that. That's wrong. And uh, if a boat was two dollars, yeah, I would probably have a boat, and I would be like, that would be like my hobby, I guess. <laughs> um, I would be like taking people out on my boat, and we'd be like in the ocean all the time. Because I do think it's worth $2. Um, and uh, so then like dopamine and motivation, it's like, does the cost of something map onto how much motivation I'm willing to expend to reach that? And then there's like, how much motivation does your job actually require for how much money you're making? And that's like, I think it's totally unfair the way that it is right now. <laughs> I think a lot of people are working very minimally and getting paid a lot, and then a lot of people are working with an extreme amount of motivation and not being paid very much. So I don't I think we fucked up. We fucked up our value system with money and the economy and how jobs pay people. Like we could probably what if we like use neuroscience to inform prices or something? Like, we try to generalize, like, we, we create, like, I don't know, in the future we'll all be neuralinked, and we will, uh, the neuralink will detect, like, dopamine processing, or maybe not even dopamine. Dopamine might not be the right thing, but it'll calculate how much we care about something, how much motivation we have towards one thing or another, and try to create a system in which, uh, we can fairly pay people for their jobs and fairly price tag things. Um, but that's really weird because it's like the price of a boat is about the resources, which might come down to also how much dopamine and motivation and effort was put into extracting those resources, but also how much of them actually exist. So that becomes like extra problematic. Um, yeah, that's weird, actually. So yeah, pricing probably right now is almost entirely dependent on resources, obviously. I think when it comes to things like art, though, then it starts to get more like, um, like if someone put in like 40 years of effort into something, um, pricing that it free sounds horrifying, right? <laughs> like... What if you worked for 40 years and then sold the product of that for free? Which I think people might actually do stuff like that with uh, virtual content. But like it's like spooky because it does actually cost resources to make a lot of the virtual content. It's just to distribute it, nope, not really. You can just pirate people's music despite how much investment it costs to create it. Um, which is weird because like the virtual space kind of destroyed the market for art. It made it so that it costs a lot of money to make art and then you're fucked. <laughs> you're fucked unless people will decide to pay you through like Patreon or uh, buy tickets to your show. Which is like a weird thing. Like there's kind of a resource market there because there's a limited amount of space to see the person live. And um telespook. <laughs> like like the what the internet has given us is it's like freed us from the resource market for virtual content. Um and it's destroyed art in a way. But at the same time, it might have destroyed the incentives of kind of like obeying a public, but that's not even entirely true. Like, well, who, how, however, like, I guess, I don't know, things are sort of different. Like, I think there's just less money for art. It's not exactly that. It's like people wanted to consume art before, but now they can do it for free. But some people are still willing to pay the artists. Um, so it's like, I don't know. And then there's like these weird companies like Spotify exploiting the problem. <laughs> They're like, hey, we'll pay you, um, 
0.1 cent every time someone consumes your virtual content that means nothing and uh <laughs> and then um you can uh go out into the world and help us profit off of you by advertising your content and uh making sure that people watch or use our service tell your following to use our service and then we'll uh rip you off but you can pay for our service because our service it's not that our service is um scars <laughs> it's more that we just decided to force you to pay for it and make it so that i don't know which artists can do oh my god artists can lock themselves behind paywalls like patreon that's really scary because so much art is for free that it's like individual artists doing that they'll just destroy themselves i think so like no one wants to do that and then there'll be a lot of poor artists um i don't know it's weird oh so too can do you have other ideas or topics that you would like to bring up Otherwise, I may be at the end of this, because I ran out of ideas. I could just, like, sit here and stare into the camera until you feel weird. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, thank you. Hmm. Hello, Toucan. I'm looking into my phone. This is actually my phone. I use my phone as the webcam, because I don't even have a webcam, because I'm poor. <laughs> um, but it actually works well, look at this. It's wireless too, except I have to plug it in because it'll die if I use it wirelessly. So it's not really wireless. It's only using Wi-Fi, but it's superficially wireless. But I can like do this, look at that. I put. I put a blanket on my window and it <laughs> covers the uh, sunlight so that it gives it lavender lighting or whatever. So yeah, okay. I will chat with you again soon. I'll probably see you inside the actual chats. Uh, but yeah, I'll post my stream and yeah, okay. Hope this is fun. Goodbye. <laughs>